Today we're going to talk about separation from illusion. Buddha says to separate from illusion is to be enlightened. We will use the Perfect Enlightenment Sutra together with the Shakama Sutra to understand enlightenment. In the Perfect Enlightenment Sutra, Buddha tells Samantha Bhadra Bodhisattva there are actually four steps to the separation from illusion. Number one, to separate oneself from all illusory projections and delude the realms. This world that we live in is merely a projection of images from our own Alaya consciousness. Therefore, all is created by our mind is merely an illusion. The sutra uses the metaphor of a man with the illness of the eyes who sees an illusory flower in the sky. The sickness of the eyes symbolizes our ignorance and the illusory flower means our attachment to the four great elements as attributes of our bodies and the condition impression of the six sense objects as attributes of our minds. We think this physical body is me and the mind that grabs onto the six sense objects as me. This is all just our illusion. There is in reality no flower in the sky, yet the sick man mistakenly clings to it because of his mistaken clinging. He is not only deluded about the intrinsic nature of the empty sky, he is also confused about the rising of the flower. Because of his false existence to which he clings, he remains in the turning wheel of birth and death. So there is actually no flower in the sky. The empty sky symbolizes our perfect nature, is without any ignorance. Our ignorance is what makes us keep reincarnating. So we need to let go of the idea of the self. There is a devoted Buddhist practitioner whose farmland being occupied by a bully in the village without permission for many years. One time the land officer came to mark all the lands in the village. The bully was very upset and said to the officer who dared to come over here to mark the land, I will beat him to the ground. Then everyone started arguing and then he said, you can sue me in court if you want. The Buddhist lady came in and said, Amitabha, when we're all together, we should be happy. Please don't be angry. Then she said to the man, do you want to give the land back to us? He said, of course not. Then she said, oh, that's no problem. You are like my parents. I should be filial to you. This land officer just wants to mark the land so everybody know our boundaries. Tomorrow you can still farm this land. If you're happy, then I'm happy. She was about to leave. That's when the man actually called her name from behind. He said in tears, I want to give the land back to you. Everyone in the village was so surprised by this dramatic change. When you're selfless and sincere, things will always work out for the best. So be selfless and kind and know the illusion of the self. Number two, however, when one clings firmly to the mind that separates, this mind should also be taken as illusion and one should separate oneself from it. We do not want to cling to the mind that is doing the separation from illusion because when you attach to it, it's also an illusion. For example, when we meditate, we usually call it mindfulness meditation. Why? Because we have awareness that is mindful of an object of meditation such as the name Amitabha or emptiness. In this case, we are focusing on contemplating on the illusory nature of our body and mind. But this mind that is aware also needs to let go. If I catch myself having a negative thought about a person at work, I tell myself I should let go of the thought, I should let go of the thought. But the more you say that to yourself, the more you think about it. So let go of this awareness and naturally you will be able to let go of wandering thoughts 
and you will be able to feel at ease. So do not be attached to this awareness either. Number three, because the separation is an illusion, it should be separated. The separation we used above should be separated as well. Because it is only a Dharma tool, we should not be attached to this Dharma tool. It is also illusory. So there is no set Dharma for anyone. Do not be attached to your practice either. For example, I have to chant 10,000 Amitabha a day or I have to meditate for five hours in order to be a good practitioner. If you're attached to your dharma, it is also ignorance. In the Diamond Sutra, Buddha says, if someone says that the Buddha has divorced certain dharma, he is calumniating the Buddha for the person could not comprehend what I have divulged. So if someone says Buddha has a certain dharma, he is slandering the Buddha because he does not know what that dharma means. So let go of our attachment to the dharma as well. It is illusory dharma. Number four, one should then be free from even the separating from the illusion of separation. All the separation above should be separated. So let go of separating of separation of illusion. Every last bit of attachment should be let go. In conclusion, when there remains nothing to be separated from, all illusions are eliminated. When all illusions extinguish, that's when the perfect enlightenment remains unmoved. Then that's the real, complete enlightenment. The sutra used another metaphor. It's like rubbing two pieces of wood together to obtain fire. When the wood completely burns, the ashes fly away and the smoke vanishes. The two pieces of wood is like number one, separation from delusion. And the fire is like separation from awareness. The smoke vanishes is like number three, let go of separation. And ashes flying away is like let go of letting go of separation. What's left over is just the ground that's perfectly unmoved. This ground symbolizes our Buddha nature that is perfectly enlightened. This is called using illusion to remedy illusion. Use the illusory body and mind to cultivate the illusory dharma. So that's how we reach enlightenment. That's our innate prajna. Now let's combine it with Shrangama Sutra. And the Sutra Guan Yin Bodhisattva said, Initially, I entered the flow through hearing and forgot objective states. Since the sense object and the sense organs were quiet, the characteristics of movement and stillness crystallized and did not arise. So Guan Yin Bodhisattva become enlightened through hearing. By hearing, he forgot the objective states. There's no more external environment, both sound, which is movement, and stillness, which is no sound. They didn't bother her anymore. And she was with her suchness, with her enlightened mind. This is the first stage, separation from delusion. After that, gradually advancing, the hearing and what was heard both disappear. That's number two, separating from the awareness. Once the hearing was gone, there was nothing to rely on, and the awareness and the object awareness became empty. That's number three, let go of separation. So the awareness and the object awareness were both empty. When the emptiness of awareness reached the ultimate perfection, the emptiness and what was being emptied then also cease to be. That's number four, let go of letting go of separation. Since the protection and extinction were gone, still extinction was revealed. This still extinction is when there is no illusion to be eliminated. That's our perfect enlightenment. That's how Guan Yin Bodhisattva became enlightened. It's through this process of separating from illusion. In conclusion, to know illusion is to depart from it. There is no need to contrive expedient means. To depart from illusion is to be enlightened. There is no gradual steps. To know illusion is to depart from it. We just have to know what is illusion. Everything is illusion. There is no gradual steps or expedient means. And we just have to depart from illusion. Then that's perfect, complete enlightenment. So all we have to do is to know. 
This is the certain teaching of the Mahayana Buddhism. This is where we should put all our attention to because this is the fastest and the quickest way to enlightenment. This enlightenment is called the complete illumination of intrinsic enlightenment which is pure in essence. And the Samadhi is called the Samadhi in which all is seen to be like illusion. This enlightenment is the perfect complete enlightenment. All we have to do is to know illusion. When you know, then it is done. It's so easy, we don't even know how. This is called certain enlightenment where the causal ground and the final enlightenment is all based on the same thing, which is our perfectly pure enlightened mind. So that's the class for today. Thank you for listening. Amitabha.